Hi Libra, welcome to your October 2019 general tarot reading. It's Raina here. I'm very excited to present my new tarot deck, which I ordered, I don't know, about a week ago. And I, w I wanted to use them right away, but I wanted it to be a consistent, um, you know, series of videos. I didn't want to just use half one, half the other. So here it is, and you're going to be the first sign that I use it with. This is called the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot Deck. This is the box, and um, there's like kind of like these, it's like gold leaf or whatever you call it. I don't know if it's called gold. Um, yeah, something like that. So there's, it's, it really shines. I don't know if you'll be able to see it today because it's kind of overcast, but this is the back of the card, which I really love. I had a feeling that Libra would really enjoy <laughs> this. And um, I haven't like really looked too much at each card, but um, apparently there's a couple of extra major arcana cards. So they go up to 23 instead of 21. So That'll be interesting. I have my little booklet there because otherwise I would have no idea what each of those extra cards stood for. So let us see what um, October is bringing. And they have a nice like uh, card stock. They're nice and sturdy and they have a nice weight to them. You know, they feel like kind of substantial. But I love the colors too, so we will see. Of course, I'll hold it up so that you can see what, what cards I have picked. Okay. They have kind of a... It's not Art Deco. It is um, another style from the turn of the 20th century. I can't remember the name of it. Um, you know, artistic style. Okay, so what we have here as the heart of the matter is the Seven of Swords. This is a card of some kind of perhaps stra strategizing, maybe even covert ops, <laughs> where you are trying to do something, but you don't necessarily want to advertise your behavior. So an example would be you're leaving your current job and you're going to be looking for other work or you already have another job offer but you're trying not to burn bridges you don't want your current employer to find out and um, you know you're trying to deal with it the best you can or a personal relationship same deal you you want to kind of get out of it whether or not you have another relationship waiting in the wings it doesn't really matter the point is is that you're trying to kind of ease out of this sticky situation if you will and also with the seven of swords this can be kind of like using your um i was going to say street smarts but with libra it's more like intelligence altogether to kind of solve this issue of like how you're going to manage all of this and um the other possibility with the seven of swords is that you are doing something, I mean, it's kind of similar where you're going alone. You're going it alone. You're Maybe you're in some kind of a group situation and now you want to kind of separate from that. But you may still be doing it in a very gradual kind of a way or casual kind of way, not some big breakup and, and make a lot of drama about it. In the past position, we have the Ten of Wands, and this indicates somebody that feels like they are carrying the load maybe of others and that sense of um, a burden even sometimes. So you may have been doing the work of you and another person and you're just tired of it. Um, in personal relationships, it can be 
taking on all of the responsibilities in the household and feeling uh, like you're burnt out or you're going to be burnt out and that it's not fair. You know, Libra always is the one that says it's not fair. And I, I bet you even said that when you were a kid. Um, you know, <laughs> I was I was thinking not too long ago, I'm not a Libra, but um, how when I was a kid, it was so important that, you know, if the parents cut a cake or something, that everybody got exactly the same size. And how absurd that sounds like right now. But there is an innate sense of fairness with with children in general, with people in general. And Libra, you know, kind of perfects it, makes it an art form of like, everybody should be equal. Everyone should get equal. Well, um, that doesn't mean that you don't end up being codependent. And part of this is the fear of saying no, of getting somebody upset, of creating making waves, if you will. And so this, you know, the Seven of Swords is kind of like an outgrowth of that. Like, I don't want confrontation, so I'm going to leave the situation, but I'm going to do so in a way, <clears throat> excuse me, that is very um, cunning and very, um, uh, you know, like very, very cunning and yet very um, subtle. Also, the Seven of Swords could be somebody is stealing from you. So um, this could be jewelry. This could be anything in your house. Um, there may be a pattern that started and you're trying to figure out who, who done it. And sometimes this can be intellectual ideas, intellectual theft. So in the workplace, somebody at the meeting coming up, you know, telling the boss, this is my idea and it really was yours. Um, and what, what you're, you know, this can even be like somebody cheating, like, like infidelity. And if that's the case, something along those lines, the Ten of Wands can be that um, in the past, you really have al always been the one um, carrying the weight in the relationship. So can you imagine if somebody goes to work every day and they come home and their partner who doesn't work is cheating on them, how that might feel. So it, it can be any of those things and you're kind of like, okay, what do I do now? Strategizing, trying to kind of figure out what you're going to do about it. The higher message is the sun card, which is such a great, see, so yeah, this one you can probably see the gold. And that's perfect for the sun card because it does have that connotation of prosperity healing, um, love, and stuff like that. This is the spiritual message. So if there is a love situation that has gone awry, um, it's saying, you know, love is healing. Love is not going to make you feel worse. It's not going to be draining. It's going to be healing. Um, Love is, you know, uh, you deserve love. You deserve to be prosperous. And if you're in a situation where you don't have those things, you need to make changes. You need to do something about it. And it seems that you may have already started, unless you're really at that initial stage where you're just kind of like, kind of figuring out what, what, what your next move is. What crosses you is the Emperor. The Emperor is a card. Now, in this deck, it's interesting. They're showing this. I wonder, it looks like he's holding a gold coin, but he's holding some kind of, I don't know if this is a staff that has kind of a cross on the, on the um, tip of it. But um, typically, the Emperor is associated with authority, control. So it could even be self-control. And um, even like the law. And if it's a person, it can be an Aries. So if, the, if this is an Aries person you're dealing with, it's kind of just reiterating that this person is not somebody who is um, good for you necessarily. 
Aries is your opposite sign. Um, I associate this card with um, Capricorn myself, and I'm a little bit curious why they they associate it with Aries. But uh, in any case, this could be like a boss, because this can be like an authority figure who is not on your side. And so if somebody is passing off your ideas to the boss and you tell the boss, you know, what the deal is, there's no real, you know, the boss may not believe you or care because they already have it in their mind about this other person that they, that they are um, showing favoritism towards. That is one of the unfortunate things about favoritism is that it's not based on logic or anything like that. It's simply based on when, when people play favorites, a lot of times they're just doing it based upon their own um, preferences that have nothing to do with anything logical. Uh, so somebody somebody could be the favorite in the workplace and not even be the most productive. Um, the boss sees something in that person that validates them. Or the person's like a major brown nose or who knows. But the point is, is that it's kind of a futile thing to try to get a boss to um, approve of you by, you know kind of doing everything, you know, sticking your neck out, doing everything, and just constantly receiving nothing in return. So eventually you have to decide if you're going to stick around for more. Also, the Emperor card could be you, and it's saying that you are not um, in control of your own life. You're kind of like abdicating control to some other person. So um, in personal relationships, you may just, you know, um, the codependency thing is an outgrowth of lack of control. And it's like trying to control what feels uncontrollable by trying to fix things, trying to um, cover for somebody who is, you know, messing up big time. And it really is one of those... Um, things that is quite, um, what, you know, what can I call it? Like, it's, it's, it's a futile attempt, you know? You would be better off focusing on your dreams than worrying about what somebody else is or isn't doing and trying to save them from themselves in some cases. What's coming in is the Three of Pentacles. There's another of the um, gold. I love that. And this is a card of teamwork. So in the office, maybe you are going to kind of like team up with other people to kind of counter somebody who is trying to usurp you. Maybe other people will notice that this individual is copying you or trying to steal your ideas and they will side with you instead of this other person and kind of like keep that person out of the, the know, if you will, so that in future situations you won't have to deal with this person there's nothing worse than a copycat that's for sure you know if you don't have ideas then and, and you're in a profession that requires like advertising for instance and and it requires you to have these ideas and you don't um, have them and you're trying to copy other people's then you're not really well suited for that type of career and you shouldn't you know try to succeed by any means necessary. So if somebody does that to you, you have every right to protect yourself. And if you don't want to quit, um, the Seven of Swords does not mean that you're going to quit. It could just mean that you're strategizing, trying to find a clever way of handling the situation. And I think there's kind of a solitary uh, part to this where you're not trying to get the boss on your side. It might, you know, the Emperor in the challenge position might indicate that even if you tried that, you wouldn't succeed. So you're trying to handle it on your own, um, but you might enlist some of your colleagues if they are generally sympathetic to you. Obviously, you have to know who you're dealing with and you have to trust them because if you're um, 
trusting the wrong people, they could actually take it back to the person who is stealing your ideas. The outcome is the Two of Wands. Uh-oh, you have to make a choice. <laughs> I thought that was a woman. But it looks like a man in a tower or something. And you see the elevation in this. You know, I think that has something to do with the two, that the fire energy is about expansion. And um, like the Three of Wands shows mountains. And this shows, even though this is two, it's like the person's in a tower or something. Um, so these illustrations are fairly um, relatable. I mean, actually quite relatable to the standard illustrations that we see in the Rider Waite deck. And so um, it makes it easier to, to link the meanings with the cards. So not that I need it at this point, but for doing these readings for those of you out there in YouTube land who may not really have a good handle on each card's meaning, but like the, you know, direct um, associations. Uh, some decks have like very unusual depictions for each meaning, and that can make things a little bit more complicated. Um, so, Libra, you may have to make a decision about whether or not you want to stay put. Um, there might even be, who knows, maybe there's another job offer waiting for you, or it might be even like a career track where perhaps you're like kind of fed up with this industry. Let's say you are in advertising and you feel like um, somebody stealing your ideas is par for the course, that it happens quite a bit. And you might just say, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm so tired of having to worry about this particular thing happening. And um, so you have to make a choice whether or not you're going to stick with this or do something else. This can also refer to making a choice in a relationship. Um, actually, this can be about relocation even. So a part of you may, might say, you know, I kind of want to live elsewhere because then I can start fresh, everything. And maybe that's my best bet. And so you're, I wanted to, to say happy birthday to those of you born in October, and even those born in September, I'll say happy birthday to you too. And so this might be coming up for you, issues regarding, you know, where are you going to live? Where there's, um, you know, your fourth house of home and family has a lot of intense kind of stuff happening with Capricorn, you know, that's your fourth house. And you've got Pluto there, you have Saturn there, uh, the south node, and um, next, well, even starting this December, you're going to have Jupiter there, so that could actually be a blessing, something good coming to you um, around that time and a, and a solar eclipse in this area in, you know, right after Christmas. So hang in there and really, you know, obviously, uh, in, and same thing with your personal relationship, you may be like, I'm out of here, but make sure that you are seeing things as they really are and that you're uh, comfortable with your decision, that it's not based on emotion so much as understanding that, you know, something has to give, that you can't just continue on in this way. Oh yes, actually, there is a uh, full moon in your house of marriage committed partnership in Aries on, I believe it's October 13th. I think it's like 20 degrees of Aries on October 13th. So that might be when things come to a head. Because I did feel like that, and I was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm recording this between the uh, before the full moon in Pisces. Maybe I'm picking up on that kind of thing, but I think that it could be that um, you are having to decide, you know, what it is that you want to do going forward, and you might just be like, I've had enough of this. Um, I just had my solar return. 
I'm interested in a new chapter in my life and I'm tired of the same old, same old. This nonsense of having to deal with somebody who is, you know, being deceptive towards me and I don't deserve it. Okay, that's what I have for you, Libra. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.